first we are going to start off with the sono anatomy along the distal thigh or what we call the suprapatellar region. This is a video of a suprapatellar positioning for the ultrasound transducer. Notice here that the proximal is on the left for the ultrasound images and proximal is on the right for the video images. In this particular individual, there is a small effusion. This knee is at 30 degrees of flexion, and increasing flexion just drives up some of the fluid into the suprapatellar pouch. The suprapatellar fat pad and prefemoral fat pad are indicated here by the arrows. They delineate the borders of the synovial fluid in this knee. And the synovial fluid here is hypoechoic when compared to the more hyperechoic fat pads. Now the fat pads are laden with nociceptors and they're rather painful when you put a needle in them. And certainly when you start to do these knee injections, you'll see that most of the pain occurs when the needle is caught in the proliferative synovial tissue and in these fat pads. The usual needle approach is short axis on the quadriceps and the needle is placed in plane. Here we see the quadriceps tendon as I circle it in blue here and the needle here is coming in in long axis and in this particular case from medial to lateral if you have a knee that does have a small amount of synovial fluid, then this is definitely the easiest way to get a needle into the joint. I would also like to point out the path of the synovial fluid here. You can see that if your transducer is more proximal on the thigh, the synovial fluid is going to be more superficial, but as you scan more distal, it drops down, and this can be a distinguishing feature of finding and refinding this synovial fluid uh, layer when you are looking in short axis to the quadriceps itself. Now here's some short axis video scanning along the distal thigh looking at the quadriceps tendon itself and then scanning a little more proximal to look for that synovial fluid line and here we can see that the synovial fluid is all along here. This is the quadriceps. And at this level, we're only seeing the prefemoral fat pad. We're compressing the fluid just to confirm that it is actually what we think it is. Next, let's talk about infrapatellar approaches. I'm starting to do this more and more in my clinical practice. It seems that with the knee extended, an infrapatellar approach gives you really simple sono anatomy to look at, and you're not chasing fluid. In this example, we're scanning a left leg, and my thumb is on the medial aspect of the ultrasound image, and I've labeled them on the screen with M for medial and L for lateral, and these are essentially going to correspond to the medial femoral condyle and the lateral femoral condyle. So in this particular image, we have several structures here. First overlying, we have the patellar tendon or patellar ligament, depending on what school of thought you've grown up in. Regardless, then we have Hoffa's fat pad. So the infrapatellar fat pad or Hoffa's fat pad covers basically everything from the articular cartilage, which is what we see here. This anechoic region is articular cartilage. And then this is the infrapatellar fat pad. This is the 
or a portion of the medial femoral condyle and then a portion of the lateral femoral condyle. The other reason I like this particular approach is because you can use standard 38 millimeter needles to get into your target in most individuals with the knee extended. Here you can see that using an in-plane approach from medial to lateral, the distance is just over three centimeters. Also, in a out-of-plane approach, just medial to the ligament, you can access the cartilage in just under two centimeters. The setup for the injection for the infrapatellar approach is going to be very similar to the suprapatellar approach or any ultrasound guided injection for that matter. You want to make sure that you have a few things in order and I like to be here and then have the patient between myself and the ultrasound machine. You shoot across the table and for this approach we're doing a medial to lateral approach and if you're doing a left knee then you'll have to move the right leg out of the way and then vice versa for the right leg. Now let's look at an example, well actually three different examples of doing this um, medial to lateral approach. We've got two left knees and one right knee. So in this uh, left knee example here, we are approaching the needle is in plane and you can see that it passes through the skin and through the hophus fat pad and then down onto the cartilage itself. This is the same kind of um, medial to lateral approach here and now I'm injecting the fluid itself and we're going to recognize two points about this particular image. The first thing I'd like to point out here is that in this area right here we are seeing some fluid escape from the cartilage interface up into the fat pad and this often occurs in individuals with degenerative joint disease like osteoarthritis and degenerative meniscal tears. Now let's look at the pattern of flow that we're expecting when we inject our injectate. So really what we have here is this area is where the fluid is going to flow and it's going to be less than obvious uh, initially. We're looking for only subtle movements of flow here and the most important thing is to see the tip of your needle and that is what's going to confirm your placement more than anything else. In the last few seconds of this clip, you'll see that, in fact, the little air bubbles coming from the last portion of the injectate show that it is deep to the fat pad and just above the articular interface. Next, we'll have a look at this 30-second clip of a right knee using a medial to lateral approach. The needle is coming in along the right side of the screen down to the articular cartilage. You can see the bevel quite clearly in this particular injection. And then the fluid is, is flowing along here, which is just deep to the fat pad interface here and just superficial to the cartilage interface, which is there. A little bit of air in the last portion of the injectate is released. Finally, I'd like to just review some of the tips on this particular approach itself. Keeping a shallow needle path is always helpful for needle visualization. 
I find that going from medial to lateral is a little easier from an approach perspective. And I like to use a 22 gauge needle. The reason being is that the 25 gauge needles often get buried right into the cartilage itself. And so then you can sink the entire thing, including the, the bevel, and, and then you're getting unnecessary resistance. So the needle itself is too thin. With a 22 gauge needle, you can get down to the cartilage itself, but the bevel will stay out of the, the cartilage and then your injectate will spread along the surface of the cartilage. I initially thought that this was more of a bad practice, but it turns out that a very small needle just doesn't do the job. And the 22 gauge is now my preferred needle to utilize. Now, what about pain? So with this, I like to get people just to take a big breath and seeing your needle along the interface here is very reassuring. Most people like to watch um, on occasion. Um, you can reassure the patient uh, knowing that yourself you're in the right place and if they're having some pain then it's going to be very short-lived. Usually the most pain is uh, when the needle passes through the fat pad itself um, and in fact the the highest portion of pain is going to be just going through the skin itself. So far with using this approach I have not ran into any complications and I have not had any flares in knee pain after the procedure related to depositing steroids into the fat pad or synovial proliferative tissue. As an aside, I wanted to show you the lateral to medial approach in the, uh, with this technique. Here's the same thing. Um, the needle is in plane. We're injecting just deep to the fat pad itself and the only difference is the side that you're approaching from. Now the reason that I like the medial approach better is because the tendon here is a little closer to the needle path and it can be a little more difficult to get through the tendon with the needle itself as opposed to going through the skin and synovial capsule using a medial approach.